Kind of what's happening, bud? He's going. He ate a big old so sucker. You man. got a big. You got a big one on. They start getting a little shaky this time of year. You got to get a 12, 14 inch bait on right now. Yeah, I can feel him down there. Dunk, dunk, dunk. He's biting. He's eating it right now. Big thing when you're doing this, guys, you want to make sure don't get on top. It's kind of. He's kind of coming back. You want that fish going away from you, so you're pulling the hooks into him. Yeah. So now he's shifting this way. I'm gonna let him keep going that way. And when he starts going away from me, I'm going to rear back into him. He's right under my boat right now. Look at all the bait. 17 foot, there's a lot of bait down there. He's directly under the boat. That's not a bad time to hit him either because you're just, you want to reel down and try to hit him. Should I? Go for it. All right. Oh, you got him. Got him. That a boy. He was in some weeds. There he is. Nice little musky. Look at that. Pretty, pretty fish. Yep. All right, I suppose I should get on the net. He's not a big one, but pretty. That's pretty cool. dude. Yeah, you got him good. You got a good hook on him. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's a good way to start the morning. <laughs> not a giant, yeah, but... Oh, and we just go like this. <laughs> you could really screw up if you get that hook in the net. Right. We'll just go like this. There we go, buddy. Nice job. Sweet. Musky in the boat. I, I, the conditions are just perfect. It's one of those Indian falls. It's really warm. It's late season, but... When you have warm, warm weather extend into November, it extends your season. The fish, just like us, like the warm days. Yep. And the tulipy and whitefish are up right now, and the muskies are up chewing, so sweet. Yep, fish in the boat. It's like a pretty close to 40 inch, or probably yep. not quite, but just a nice, nice one to start the morning, that's for sure. Love it. Let's get this girl in hook. Yeah, we want to be really careful with these fish. They're big and old, so. This one we had a real good, real good unhook without hurting an eye or anything. So yeah, she'll be all right. You want to clear that quick strike? I got the net. Look at that! Nice big fall muskie. Live bait is a hard, hard presentation to beat in the fall, any time of the year for that matter. But right now it's late in the year, and we got a big storm coming in, and the muskies are biting. Her. Oh, it's a nice jack. <laughs> That's the bonus fish in the fall too. You get these nice jacks that come up and they're they're eating on the same forage base, the tulip and whitefish on these lakes. So, you know, these sucker minnows we're fishing are, they're native to all these lakes too. So all these, we run a lot of underwater cameras, Kyle's diving all summer, and we see a lot of sucker minnows down there too. So sucker minnows are always on the, on the menu with pike and muskie and walleye and smallmouth, but we'll get her back, huh? Yeah. We'll show you guys what we're doing, how we're rigging these minnows today. It's kind of a unique system. It's a little bit messing around, but once you learn how to do it, it's pretty easy. And it's a great way to keep these minnows alive and healthy. And then also to increase your hooking percentage when you're fishing big bait like this. Because the reality is you have a huge lure, so you have a lot of surface area per the hooks. So we want to rig those a certain way where I can break this rig completely free from the minnow. That way, if a fish grabs that front hook, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna not be able to set the hook. I wanna be able to break that rig completely free from the fish's mouth, so. Here's the bait, you know, right there. Pretty good sized bait, that's probably an 11 inch, 10, 10, 11 inch sucker minnow. So that's what's on the menu today. And what I have here is a small rubber band, like a little kid would be putting in their hair, and a little piece of wire. Basically, this is just a needle thread. It's a piece of like 80 pound wire and then I have it crimped on the end so it makes a little hook. And we're gonna do a bridle on the nose and that prevents us from actually having to hook the sucker minnow through the nose. And more importantly, it allows, when we set the hook, it allows the hooks to break free from the body of the sucker minnow. So all I did there is hook that rubber band through that little hook in the wire. Go ahead and just take that hook point, put, put it through the other side, the barb kind of 
holds that rubber band on. Now I'm just gonna give it a twist and then put that hook back under the, the twist. So now that's pretty secure. You can see what I've done there. We just call it a bridle and musky fishing. Obviously saltwater guys are pretty familiar with this, this style of live bait rigging. I do something a little bit unique for this back hook. Again, I wanna be able to break this rig free. So I actually take a little safety pin and I'll uh, just kind of go through the skin and a little bit of meat. And I run this back piece of tieable titanium just in the, in the gap of the safety pin. So you can see what happens now. That can wander and it's not actually hooked into the fish. I set the hook hard, I go ahead and break that rubber band. This one's pretty free float and I can rip that safety pin out on a hard hook set. And now I've completely disconnected my quick strike rig from this minnow. So that's the rigging system. We'll usually mix up sizes of minnows. So this is a small one. I'd say this might be a, like a nine, 10 incher. Kyle will probably put on like a 12, 13 or 14 incher. And we'll see if the fish have a preference on any given day. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. If I can get by fishing a slightly smaller bait and still catch quality fish, I'm gonna do that just because my hooking percentage is greater. Less surface area on the minnow in relation to my hook points. But sometimes giant fish want a great big bait or you're gonna select, you know, be able to target bigger fish with a bigger bait. So you just gotta see what the fish want on any given day. You know, you don't need really specialized gear for musky fishing either. They make short, powerful runs, but it's not like a really long dog fight like you might have with a steelhead or a sturgeon or, you know, a giant catfish or something. So we do have musky gear. This is an Omen Black 13 fishing. It's an eight foot rod. It's a heavy, you know, heavy power. So this is a concept A3, which just has a really big gearbox. And I am spooled up with 65 pound braid. This is uh, suffix 832. So. You could take a flip and stick for bass fishing and be just fine. Again, with these quick strike rigs, we're just kind of positioning ourselves so when the fish is going away from us, we'll just engage on that fish. We want to feel that weight of the fish first, and then I'll just speed reel just to tighten on the system. And I'm just trying to get that one of those hooks to catch on the skin of the, the muskie's mouth. And then once, once that rod starts to load, that's where I'll, I'll dig in a little bit and drive that fine hook point home. Kyle, what's happening? Well, I was just looking sightseeing, looking at this beautiful lake, and I just felt my rod go thunk. I looked down, my bobber is gone. All right, he's going, he's going away. I can feel him adjusting that. I'm going to go for him. Got him. Oh, it's a nice jack. Big jack. Nice big jack. <laughs> That's fun. Beautiful fish. Look at that guy. Wow. Got him hooked right in the top of the mouth. Wow, this is a really pretty fish. Good grief. They don't make them much prettier than that. <laughs> Look at that girl. Thank you, Miss Pike.